610 WTVN. Rick Heller, who's joined us a couple of times in the past. Rick, great to have you back this morning. Thank you for having me. Sure, yeah, you and yours, uh, everybody staying uh, safe and healthy during the uh, outbreak? Oh, yeah. Good. Good. So we got this new study, uh, an outbreak tied to a restaurant in China. And the uh, word we're getting from there is, you know, they, they kind of had their flare up and then it was kind of dying down. So they kind of let people start moving around the community again. And it seems like it's starting to flare back up. What do you know about what's going on there? Uh, it's, it's the usual. It's, you know, this is highly infectious, uh, this disease. That just means that, you know, enough contact and it doesn't take much is going to infect people, and people are highly susceptible. You know, it takes two parts, the transmission, so a sick person and a group of well people, and then it takes well people who are susceptible to that. You can find families where one person has the flu, and amongst that family, they might have one other case, if any. And uh, that just shows that either the people are resilient to it or that the transmitter is not so uh, uh, is, is not so infectious. Yeah, and, and tell me because you know there's a lot of people that are concerned about you know starting to get out again, uh, the reopening of the economy and such, and they're they're worried because it's like, hey, I I don't know exactly um, you know who has it, who doesn't, and then I'm not sure how this thing transmits. I mean, there's there's been stories about it can transmit on your shoes. Uh, a lot of talk about uh, air. Uh, that's why we're wearing masks and staying six feet apart and all that stuff. But this this restaurant one, uh, it makes me think that the HVAC, you know, the way the air circulates, might be uh, a real problem uh, as this uh, disease continues to spread. Yeah. So we we've, we've been looking at this for uh, almost a decade now, and uh, obviously the indoor air is the key. Uh, air conditioning has, you know, a bunch of unique properties. One is, is it, you know, pulls in all the air and then it blows it all out. And the restaurant scene was very interesting. Uh, the one that I looked at was, uh, it's simply right above, right below the air vent. It completely missed one of the tables and it blew right on the second table. And, uh, there it was a family. So you don't know when they actually got infected, but, I think four out of six of them had it. And then the table right after that, where obviously the air had blown onto that table and then moved all the way to some, you know, it must have been about 10, 15 feet from the vent. So that's a unique situation as compared to our six-foot distancing. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, air conditioning tends to uh, take water out of the environment where very strong, uh, not proponents, but students of the fact that dry air enhances the ability for virus from a sick person to transmit to a well person. And that well person also becomes susceptible by the lack of moisture in the air. They give up, you know, we all give up about five to ten times more in dry air of, uh, of moisture from our lungs that we ever get back from an inhale. Yeah. So the exhale gives it up and the inhale barely gets enough back. Well, and that's the thing. That's, that's why, you know, for some maladies, uh, it's great to move to Arizona because it's a dry heat out there. And for some things, that's really good. But with this particular, the coronavirus, uh, a, a warmer, moister air seems to be advantageous than the cooler, drier air. Yeah, and that's why you get the you get the Florida benefit, you know. And I, I bet I'm actually from Florida, uh, growing up in Florida, and and the moisture because of the warmth of the air and because of the proximity to the ocean, uh, all parts of Florida, uh, they're going to have moist air. And that moist air outdoors, while it's interesting, uh, obviously we know that outdoors is not really spreading the disease. That uh, in fact, sunlight has a very a uh, strong effect on disinfecting or denaturing the virus itself. And that's n- not necessarily from sunlight as we know it. It's from a certain band within the sunlight. You'll hear about it more and more called the UVC band. And it's not the one that gives you a sunburn uh, and, and no other UV. It's just a, uh, it's a middle band in there. It's purple. And so you'll see lights, you'll see keyboard sanitizers and things like that. So that's the thing, you know, there's been this great speculation in this country, maybe around the world, I don't know, uh, but to, as we get closer to summer, 
temperatures come up, humidity comes up. Uh, that's why an awful lot of people think that the virus may lay down a little bit during the summer months. Are you uh, kind of on that line of thinking? Yeah, I'm a strong proponent of that. I, I, I am shaken, though, by the amount of uh, continued outbreak. Uh, it just shows you, it goes to how infectious this is. But uh, what it might tell you, too, is, is that while it's very infect- while it continues to be infectious in the summer, and we are seeing a number of places peaking, uh, and a lot of that uh, might be behavior, you know, not necessarily attributed to the uh, the moisture. What's going to happen is is that it's going to accelerate at a rapacious rate from September, October in the Northeast, and then as the country kind of gets covered in this uh, cooler air uh, from time to time, and more and more as we go into winter, that dry air is going to go into commercial buildings who exchange their air constantly. I mean, like five to ten times an hour uh, of a building by code will exchange the outside air with the inside air. Well, that's great. You know, it gets rid of the carbon dioxide we, uh, we exhale. What's important is to know that they're taking the moisture from the outside to the inside. And so for commercial buildings, we think that the future, especially after this calamity we have, uh, called coronavirus, COVID-19, we think that the humidification is going to become a, a key part of our uh, HVAC. I have no investment or uh, dog in that fight, but that's a very important thing. Yeah, so is it the kind of thing I should rely on, you know, the the company, like whatever space we lease or own or whatever, should rely on them to, to work with HVAC to get that done? Or is it as simple as bringing a humidifier and setting it on my desk? I mean, would that, would that help a tremendous amount? I think the I, I think the buildings are going to have to do it. Uh, Sloan Kettering in New York has it from basement to the very top, and they set their uh, humidistats to fifty percent relative humidity. So it doesn't matter what it is outside, cold, hot, moist, dry. And by the way, you can have hot days that are dry. Yeah, Phoenix being an example. Sure. So uh, and you know they're a cancer hospital. They have a lot of immunocompromised. And the benefits they have, they'll uh, have to speak to. But they've been doing this for uh, well over uh, two years. And, and you know, the, the, the thing that I think of, you know, when I think about increasing humidity in a workspace, uh, just about everybody that's sitting inside, uh, you're at a desk, you've got a computer. Do you have any knowledge of the impact, whether negative or positive, on electronics if you were to increase the humidity to 50%? No. Uh, no yeah. I, I mean... Um, it turns out that uh, dry air is a, uh, what do you call it, it's, it's terrible for electronics huh. because you build up static, you know, it's technically called tribal charging, but you build up static and you get that shock, you know, and it's usually early in the season you get it and sometimes, you know, day by day, but that's dry air, that's not even cold, and it seems to come with cold, but it's dry air that gives you the shock. There you go. That's yeah. great, great information. Rick, we appreciate it very much. Rick Heller there. He is an infectious disease specialist. And uh, that that's we, the more we talk, the more we hear uh, just about the transfer of coronavirus and how air, air quality, the movement of air within, you know, grocery stores, malls, uh, where you work, hospitals and all that uh, is seemingly taking on more and more import as we move forward. So there's another piece of the puzzle on News Radio 610 WTVN.